In this video, we'll be diving into a freshwater lake in search of one of my favorite fish, the shy and often elusive chain pickerel. These beautiful fish are usually found in relatively shallow water where they lie hidden within the submerged vegetation waiting for their next meal. I don't see them very often because they're far less trusting and much more shy than the largemouth bass that we looked at on our last dive. And after many years and countless hours in the water searching for pickerel, they still remain very difficult to find and capture on film. This largemouth bass, on the other hand, is much more like a big friendly dog who's always happy to see me, whereas trying to locate and film a chain pickerel is more like looking for Bigfoot. These masters of camouflage are sometimes very difficult to find, and I have to move through the water very carefully in order to not scare them away. And sometimes I don't see them until I'm right on top of them and they decide to move from where they're hiding. So, filming them required me to move very slowly through shallow water containing a thick cover of aquatic vegetation. The problem with this approach is that shallow water containing lots of vegetation also contains lots of blood-sucking leeches. And, on several different occasions, I found leeches attached to me when I returned to the shore. On one of these occasions, a leech remained hidden in between two of the toes on my right foot. The leech made it all the way back to my home where I discovered it while showering. Amazingly, the leech was still alive, so naturally I had to carefully remove the little aquatic vampire and put it in an empty aquarium so that I could film it for this video. For those of you in the United States, this particular leech was about one and a half inches long when fully extended, and for those of you in the rest of the world, it was about four centimeters in length. In the aquarium, leeches are sometimes confused with a fairly similar looking creature known as a planaria. One of the ways to tell them apart is by their motion. Leeches have a grab and pull motion where they move by alternately expanding and then contracting their body. While planaria, on the other hand, move in one graceful motion, so it's more like they're gliding rather than pulling themselves along the way a leech does. The pickerel relies on stealth and the element of surprise in order to catch its prey, which consists mostly of smaller fish. As we get closer to this hidden pickerel, be sure to notice the line running down the center of its body right between the eyes. This line mimics the vegetation around it and helps provide additional camouflage. While stealth is an important part of the pickerel's success as a predator, their greatest advantage lies in how incredibly fast they can accelerate when attacking their prey. The slender body design and pointed head enables the pickerel to shoot through the water with a minimal amount of resistance, while the dorsal fin and the large anal fin are positioned near the tail. This fin arrangement transfers most of the energy provided by their muscles directly to the three largest fins, allowing for sudden bursts of speed and rapid changes in direction. So not only are they fast, but they're also very agile. Furthermore, both the pectoral fins and the ventral fins are positioned low on the body to help reduce drag. This position also helps to keep them from getting hung up on the dense vegetation that the pickerel likes to hide in. And as I follow this pickerel into the shallow water filled with weeds, I'm reminded of the leeches that I'll need to remove at the end of this little adventure. The leech bites cause pain and irritation at the wound site for about three to four days, but I feel that it's a small price to pay for the opportunity to capture these beautiful fish on film. However, not everyone loves the chain pickerel as much as I do. Bass fishermen, in particular, often view them as a nuisance because the chain pickerel has a voracious appetite and they often take the bait that's intended for the bass. 
To say that the chain pickerel is quick to the hook would not be an exaggeration. In fact, I once caught a 22-inch pickerel using an artificial lure. When I got the fish to shore, I discovered that it already had two other lures in its mouth. Pickerel have a mouthful of long, sharp teeth, and it's not uncommon for them to cut through fishing line during a vigorous struggle with an angler. How that fish was eating and surviving with two lures in its mouth is a bit of a mystery, but I imagine that it must have happened fairly recently. However, this pickerel's lucky streak came to an end when it was decided that we were just as hungry as the fish. So I removed its head and its entrails, wrapped it in tinfoil with a bit of butter, a few slices of onion, and a couple lemon wedges. We cooked it over an open fire. The flesh was delicious, but it had a lot of small bones to pick through. And, in a strange twist of fate, several of those bones got caught in my throat. Before I begin this next part of the video, I'd like to mention the white cloudy looking material that you've probably noticed at several points during the video. These clouds are made up of a collection of several different types of free-floating algae, and they're known as metaphyton clouds. We'll take a closer look at these in a future video. Now, see if you can spot the pickerel in this scene. It's hunting for something at the bottom of the lake, and I'm about to disturb it. This little creature is an eastern newt, and they're fairly common in most bodies of fresh water in the eastern half of the United States. Their skin secretes a potent neurotoxin that keeps most things from trying to eat them. However, bullfrogs and turtles seem to be immune to its effects. The eastern newt is fully aquatic, but they do need to surface for air. And if these beautiful little animals weren't toxic, swimming around like this in a lake filled with hungry fish would be a very bad idea. In this next scene, I frighten one of these newts, and it swims away, which was probably a bad idea on the part of the newt, because the sudden motion catches the attention of the pickerel that I've been following, and suffice it to say that it's not a good day for the newt. I followed the pickerel to see if it would swallow the newt, but the pickerel swam away and disappeared, so it might have rejected the toxic little amphibian once it realized its mistake. Chain pickerel are active throughout the cold winter months and continue feeding even though the lake is covered in ice, making them a favorite target for people who enjoy ice fishing. This ability to feed beneath the ice throughout the long cold winter months enables the pickerel to spawn in the very early spring, soon after the ice melts and the water temperatures climb into the mid-40s. This is far earlier than the other fish in the lake, who wait until the water temperatures climb into the mid-50s and low-60s before they spawn. The early spawning time of the chain pickerel allows their fry to get large enough so that they can feed on the fry of the species that spawn much later in the season. The baby pickerel grow quickly, and it looks like this one has recently fed. The other fish with the black stripe is the fry of a largemouth bass. Be sure to notice how they have two very different strategies when it comes to coloration.
If everything works in this little pickerel's favor, it could live to be about nine years old and reach a length of nearly thirty inches. However, the chain pickerel is prized by fishermen more for their aggression than for their large size. They're such beautiful fish, but finding and filming them was a real challenge. They're so shy that it's hard to gain their trust, but that didn't stop me from trying. However, I had to learn to move more slowly, to take my time in the water and be more mindful of my surroundings. I learned that if I moved too quickly or became distracted that I'd swim right by them. I learned to be patient and to let the fish decide how the interaction between us would progress. I also learned to set my ego aside and to just let things happen naturally at a pace set by the fish. And, as with any sort of personal growth, there always comes a certain measure of pain, and that's where the blood-sucking leeches played their part. And, as unpleasant as the leeches were, being able to capture these beautiful fish on film was well worth the pain and the minute loss of blood. However, I'm not sure that I was ever able to gain the pickerel's trust, and I'm not even sure that it's possible, especially after word gets out that I had one of them for lunch.